Okay, this is a continuation of the last video for this CMAX FTFB32 talking to a control logics processor. Um, the last video I showed that there was four different modes of operation. We're now going to be talking about the direct mode. Uh, there were a couple of bits around this rung here. Those are old obsolete bits, so ignore them in the previous video. Uh, but basically, you put it into direct mode. Make sure that we are in direct mode, which we could confirm in here. And the manual discusses direct mode in the function block itself. And we're going to talk about the function block. Sorry, position X to move. Talk about all the different bits, what the purpose is. And then talk about the sample code. And it gives you an example of how to execute a normal move. Okay, so that's that. Um, I'm just going to show you one move here. One or two moves. Again, I've got a sequence in here that is while we're in auto mode. This, this is when all these functions work. If we're in auto, uh, and if we're not in manual control, then we're still in auto. Um, the sequence will operate on this. Otherwise, if you want to operate this manually, you can simply turn these bits on. Um, I'm going to go down here where there's something where we're not at. And right now, we told the, the target is 1, and we're at 1, more or less. Make some error. This one down here is turn value 50. So I'm going to execute this code here. Go uh, into manual mode. Again, the feedback type force. We're not using force in my configuration. We're using the, uh, the position, actual position right here. The move relative, that means whether you do a, a relative move or an absolute. The default for zero is absolute move. Tracking, um, I can show you tracking. Tracking is just simply whatever the value is at the time. When you turn the control on, it's now in tracking. Tracking states on, so if I was to any, just change the value to anything I want here, let's change it to 60. Without turning this off and on, it, it's simply tracking. Okay, I told it to go to 200. It's going to go right away to 200 without doing anything else. So that's what tracking is. Very simple uh, concept. Let's put that back. Turn the tracking off. Turn the bit off. Um, fast stop, velocity control auto. The velocity control auto is the uh, user's discretion as far as whether they use their the user's defined parameters for cell D cell velocity or the identified maximum values during the identification process. Um, again, referencing the, the literature, the fast stop. Enable that is another feature that uh, either means you're going to do an accurate stop or as quick as possible stop and then give the motion complete. So that's that's the gist on the position axis move. We'll move into a force axis move. Um, I'm just going to turn the bits back off here. Go back into normal control. The force move. I only have one force move set up. Again. To, to duplicate this, it's, it's not that difficult. Disable the action. Okay. So, the detail of this function block is discussed in the manual, just like all the rest of them are. So, the uh, force axis move here, parameters. The one parameter I want to discuss is. Normally, when you are executing a force move, you specify force uh, target, meaning you know, let's say 100 newton, um, and you set the start bit, and it'll apply the force. When you turn the start bit off, it's still applying the force. Um, so I've given this instruction the ability to do a couple different things with regards to 
what happens after you turn off the start bit. Okay, the, the default is that if it's zero, this in, disable reaction means that if it's zero, if you apply the zero force or 100 newton force or 200 newton force and you turn the enable off because you have the motion complete, um, it'll retain that force. If it's a one, then when you turn the enable off, it will apply a zero force. And if it's a two, it will switch to position mode as quickly as possible in order to maintain that position and you're not applying force anymore. I thought that was an important perspective on things. And that's why I added to the function bar. The feedback to position again is based on the configuration in the SCT. The velocity and stroke limits are kind of self-explanatory. The FCT controller has the the FCT controller has the ability in force mode, just like you would see right here, uh, to monitor for velocity or stroke monitoring. Uh, that's set up right here under the controller data. You go in here and you set up these values. And, and the gist of it is, is that if I was to start a move at zero and I have stroke monitoring turned on, then if when the axis starts to move, it, if it exceeds the distance of 15 millimeters during that time, then it will stop the axis fault and provide you a stroke monitoring fault. Same thing applies to velocity. If you're in the middle of a move and you exceed the velocity while you're in torque mode, then it'll stop the axis fault and give you the value. So this is part of the features that I've added in here. I'm disabling that so that, you know, I'm at position 50 right now. I'm just going to let it go in the full stroke. I'm going to turn the axis bit on. The axis is moving with a small force. Motion complete, meaning you've reached the, uh, the value. And uh, <clears throat> if I was monitoring for force, then uh, it would be a different value right here. Turn this off because it's disabled action is two, then it's going to be in position mode. So there's a quick overview of all the function blocks and so on and so forth. So the rest of the code is kind of self explanatory. Um, yeah, main routines, local status. If you have any further questions, just contact Vespa Technical Support and ask for Stephen Kraut. Which is in the manual here. There's the contact information right here. Hopefully, I've helped you understand the code a little bit better than you have already in the past. And thanks for using Vespa.